When this woman told students about her adoption, a classmate suddenly realized a 30-year-old truth. On the first day of any class, students can usually count on one thing, a round table introduction. And this was certainly the case for Lizzie Valverde at Columbia University in January of 2013. But when the autobiographical facts offered aren't typically fascinating ones, what Valverde revealed proved to be an exception for one student. Indeed, one of her unsuspecting classmates was stunned by what she learned that day. The introductory session for a creative writing class at the School of General Studies of Columbia University proved to be an extraordinary chapter in the lives of the two participants. Valverde had only enrolled for the course at the last minute and didn't have the first idea about what she was to set in motion as she cleared her throat and began to talk. Then the 33-year-old gave her classmates a few facts about herself, with details that would leave one particular female student in disbelief. Valverde had noticed the woman's extreme reaction and, after the class had finished, watched as she approached. The two students then spoke further and a line of questioning aimed at Valverde seemed to make up her interviewer's mind. The stranger subsequently told Valverde that she'd helped to solve a 30-year-old family secret, and when the woman explained how, the news stunned both classmates. Furthermore, when their story went viral, it was the Internet's turn to be astonished. Columbia University School of General Studies is intended to provide an Ivy League education to students from non-traditional backgrounds. And before she walked into class on that fateful day, Valverde's life could certainly have been said to have followed an unconventional path. She was born on December 8, 1979 in Tampa, Florida, but wouldn't live there for long, having been adopted shortly after coming into this world. And her adoptive parents, the Delgados, lived more than a thousand miles away from the Sunshine State in New Jersey. This, moreover, is where their new little girl spent her formative years. But now in her mid-30s and with a family of her own, Valverde had made an important life decision. She'd go back to school and indulge her passion for creative writing by studying it formally. So, with the help of the School of General Studies, Valverde had enrolled at Columbia University. And while she'd only signed up for the creative writing course minutes before class started, she nonetheless arrived in time for the customary introductions that day in January of 2013. Furthermore, as a budding writer, Valverde was more than happy to share the story of her life so far. But as the new student spoke to the group at Columbia's Kent Hall about herself, including the fact that she'd been adopted, she couldn't help noticing something. Specifically, it appears as though something was seriously wrong with the woman sitting across from her. It looked like she was having a panic attack, Valverde would tell the New York Times in May of 2015. Little did Valverde know, however, that the student sat at the opposite side of the table had a very similar life story to her own. Her name was Katie Olson, and she was a year younger than Valverde. Born with a mild case of cerebral palsy, Olson had been adopted at a young age, but as it turned out, her family had lived in Florida for some time before moving to Iowa in the Midwest. On top of that, Olson had previously spent time delving into her personal past to try and find out more about her biological family. And through arduous online research, she'd uncovered the identity of her birth mother. In the process, however, the inquisitive woman had also found out that she may have had an elderly sister called Delgado. From there, Olson did more online digging about the woman who could be her sister. And as a result, she discovered that her long-lost sibling had grown up in the New Jersey area. Olson also learned that her sister had got married and ended up studying at Columbia University, the very same institution she herself was attending. And while Olson had no idea about what subject her sibling may have been majoring in, she nevertheless felt that she had enough to go on. So Olson set about using what she did know to try and track down the woman who might be her sister. Yet, although she'd reached out via various emails, she'd received no responses to her online missives. It appeared then that Olson's quest had sadly reached a dead end. Even if Olson's trial and error emails had come to nothing, though, all that internet research had not been in vain. And the facts she learned were just why she appeared to be in shock in the creative writing class. Indeed, Olson told the New York Times what Valverde said fit together with a lot of the stuff that she knew about her biological sister. Interestingly, in fact, Olson was convinced that the woman she spent so long searching for was now sitting right in front of her. All the pieces just came together for me, she later said, but Olson also knew that she'd have to avoid prying deeper into Valverde's past too quickly. I worried that she'd think I was stalking her, she later admitted. The younger woman sat turning the issue over in her mind as the class progressed. By the time the session ended, though, her curiosity had overcome her initial instinct to remain silent. After all, she'd waited years for this moment. I didn't want to let her get away, Olson said. 
I couldn't go home and sit for a week without getting an answer to this question. So Olsen waited until the introductory class was over before she approached Belverde. In the end though, the younger woman's nerves took over and the details about her long lost biological older sister and follow up questions came thick and fast. And as the conversation went on, it was Belverde's turn to be stunned. She would known very little about her biological family and entertained few hopes that she may have any siblings. In 2015, Columbia University press release quotes her as saying, My adoptive mother was contacted in 1980 about adopting another girl from my biological mother, but she was told the baby may not survive because of complications with her birth and delivery. Belverde further recalled, After that, my adoptive mother never heard anything further and I thought my sister had died. But thankfully, it turned out she had mercifully not met such a fate, and in fact, she had been sitting across from Belverde that day in creative writing class. Olson told her sincerely, I think we're sisters. According to the New York Times, the only thing fiction aficionado Valverde could say in response was to ask, Is this real life? The two subsequently left Kent Hall together and headed to a nearby bar. There they spent the next few hours swapping questions and answers over several rounds of drinks. We just ordered pitchers of beer and started going back and forth with our lives and biographical details, Olson told ABC News in 2015. Like, do you like chicken wings? I like chicken wings. Do you have a weird pinky toe? I have a weird pinky toe. But of course, it was their mutual passion for creative writing that the sisters have to thank for ultimately bringing them together. Since that day in class, meanwhile, the two have worked on forging a close bond, teaming up for vacations as well as becoming fast friends on campus. Furthermore, the women have even introduced each other to their respective adoptive families. And having left Columbia the year before, Olson was proud to attend her sister's graduation from the school in May of 2015. Plus, there was a guest of honor in attendance, the woman's biological mother, Leslie Parker. Parker could only loud her daughter's successes, telling ABC News, they're both amazing, beautiful women. And their chance meeting in class? Well, Parker told the New York Times that she could only think of one explanation for that when she heard about it. I felt like the world was coming full circle, she said. Please share this video with your friends below.